Hey everybody, welcome back. Got a lot to go over today. We can obviously see that the market was down, down about 1%, nothing crazy. But most important for us is, do we just make that lower low? I don't think we should put a lot of faith into this as far as the big moves. We know why we're moving. We're going to discuss it again. We went over it on Saturday. Exactly what we said on Saturday is exactly what happened here, actually. We're going to go through that as well, and I'm going to link that as well. But you see your level right here. Let's drop a pin right there and just take a look at what you need to watch for tomorrow. You can see right there. You just really want to watch that 47.35 level. Just make sure that you hold right in here. I don't see that. I don't see that as a, a be all end all. But you never know how much this uh, tax selling kicks in, and people aren't really aware of what's going on out there if, if they're newer to trading. So we're going to walk through some of that uh, and explain the nuances of this in, in a little bit of detail. Now, if you take a look here and you take a look at ES. Okay, so we closed under the 12. When was the last time here? We don't really want to start staying under here and start watching these go sideways. We're not really crazy about the fact that the RSI uh, is now below that 70 line. That doesn't really make us feel warm and fuzzy either. The other thing that doesn't make me feel warm and fuzzy is that you have a high here and you have a lower high here, and now you have a high here and a higher high here. So you really have a negative divergence at the top of the chart. That's not going to make me feel great either. I'm not, I'm not surprised by today's action at all. I mean, we did discuss this in great detail uh, in the pre-market today, and we did discuss it, the pre-market public video, and we did discuss it Saturday's video, and we've just been discussing it for the past week that this was going to happen uh, and why this was going to happen. But let's drill into this a little bit more. As always, I appreciate your comments about just come out with the video. It does, you don't care if how raw it is. It saves me a lot of time to not have to worry about editing. And what we're going to do is just focus on exactly what we see going on here. Here's the ES on the hourly. These are those private clouds that I use. When we talked about this pre-market, uh, I was very clear, like, look, I'm, I'm a net seller today. It's really all I did today uh, till the end of the day. And then there were a couple things that I bought that were more value plays. But right here, this, this was glaring to me, tries to get through my cloud, unable to. And so I was just a net seller on the day and it just followed that pattern all day long. You're trying to rally later, but I, you know, we'll see how that goes. I do see the positive divergence here on the hourly. People don't want to play these divergences. That's fine. They don't always work. Nothing always works. But I do look at that, and it is something that I'm paying attention to. Sometimes you drop it on a four-hour, and you just want to say, hey, like, where are we and what's going on? Uh, you know, you start getting to a four-hour and you start curling. You might want to pay attention to that. It might be something on your radar. That's a long way down from Wednesday to here in a very short period of time. And you can usually see that when you get to that 30 line, it's not the place that you really remember. This is four hours. So this is not really the place that when you start curling up over that, that you really want to be putting those shorts on. Remember, each one of these bars is four hours when I'm saying this. So it's definitely something to think about. It doesn't mean you're going to catch this, but it also means that probably not the greatest place in the world to be pressing you know, some mega tech shorts right here. It can always get worse. We know that. And technicals can always get worse, but you have to play the hand that you're dealt. This is the hand that we're dealt and we're paying attention to it. So a couple other key things that I think are important. I don't always use this, but I think it's worth mentioning that we are below the cloud on the four hour. And I don't, I don't always use it, but it's worth paying attention to. You flipped back here, November 2nd was where the cloud flipped and we t tore over it. You really have not been below these clouds on the ES. So I just wanted to point this out. You are below this and you were only below it one other time. You don't want to stay here. You don't want this to turn yellow. If it does, that usually means to me that we're going down at sideways at best. And you can see here how, how just pretty accurate this reading is. I've been using this for a long time and it works. Now, if we just flip over to the NQ, you can already see where you are in the four hour, right? You're already grossly oversold down here to 17. Again, people will say that you know, they don't like using RSI. That's fine. You don't have to use it. You use what you f you're comfortable with, but it's not going to change how I trade. Uh, and you can just kind of see that positive divergence right here as well. And what happened when you got back over that 30 from positive divergence? I mean, I don't know how many times people have to see this to believe that it works, but, <laughs> but here you are again. Uh, and then you're flipping your cloud right here and you're lifting. And then you can see my 100 levels in here as I was just monitoring the day, uh, just looking for areas to trade. And they were pretty accurate today, actually. So you got to see how we bonked around right in there. It got right to our support level and held. Now the question becomes, where do we go from here? So let's just look at this on a daily, drop this down, and let's pull this all the way down and come over. Let's clear house. All right, so there's your key level, right? Are you going to get to 16.5? I don't have a clue, just like everybody else. And anyone that says they know, they don't know. But here you are, and you can see you didn't have a negative divergence, but you're already getting to that point where you're almost neutral in a day. Um, that's kind of scary that it happened so fast. But right to that 22, I use a 12, a 22, and a 55. You should use what you're comfortable with. 
but we got right to that level. And then we're gonna have to see how we hold or what we're gonna do there. But if we do break that 22, well, then you're gonna get right to that 16.5, 16.480, and we're gonna find out real quick. But there are your levels, and you have not broken the 22 since you flipped it November 2nd. That falls in line with several other indicators that I just gave you as well. So you're gonna to wanna to watch that. But what is most optimal is for us to bounce up and then come back and fill. That would be most optimal for me to think that this is gonna continue. If you gap down anyway tomorrow, I'd most likely be a net buyer of that gap down because we're just, you can only go, you can only be so oversold. It only goes so far down. You can always have your anomalies, but if you play the numbers, you're, you're fine. I mean, if you, where, where am I going with this? Go in short every single time that you have a four hour where the RSI is at 18 and let me know how that goes and how much money you have left uh, in a year. So it, it won't be much. So, you know, you play the odds. So if you want to take a look at that, uh, go for it. But other than that, I'd, I'd respect it. So if we gap down, I'm going to look at taking the other side, barring some news uh, that's out there. And there was some news out there that could move some of these names, but you are seeing some of these other guys really start to pick up. So you can see how that's all playing out. You start taking a look at RTY, what happened. Now you're overbought. We know we're overbought. We went through a bunch of indicators on Saturday that showed this one, two, three support right now what was it it was resistance resistance is becoming what resistance is becoming support that's what you want to see you want to see resistance becoming support that's a good thing but you are overbought and you did cross the 70 line and that is a sell signal an intermediate sell signal to me so i have to be careful you had a lot of little reversals today though didn't you so you have mstr this is one that we're in still in we're in, in the fours it's up here is at like 720 today uh, rocking and rolling. If you ever play the Bitcoin names, to me, this is the one that plays. They're the ones that actually own Bitcoin. Uh, if I was in the Bitcoin names, I might as well go off on this little rant for a minute. Uh, if Bitcoin looked this good, let's just drop that back into a plane chart again, because I do want to cover this before I cover the econ data and some other things out there. If I was long the Bitcoin miners, I'd be concerned. I'll tell you why. Bitcoin's breaking out. Uh, MicroStrategy stayed up. So it's not the underlying asset that's the problem. It's the run that these things had. Look at Mara today. This was something we actually shorted in candidly based upon the amount of uh, implied volatility out there. Didn't do very well with it. So, and just because we made money, but it was two, two and a half dollars, I think we caught and the options hardly moved. Just the implied volatility was just crazy. It was, I was just better off shorting stock. Uh, sometimes that's the case, but not everyone can borrow. So it's very difficult to look at that chart and say, oh yeah, we're definitely going higher. The, the larger problem is you just made a lower low as Bitcoin made a higher high. So that should not really inspire a lot of confidence in these charts when you start to look at them. They are major breaks that need a ton of work now. So you have these major names that have absolutely cracked. And now you're at a point you're just going to assume that they're just going to roll up. That's not going to happen. If you just take a look at what's happening here, these blue lines are all your uh, anchored VWAPs. Good luck with that. And now that's just clean house there again. And now what do you have? You have the 3-5 cross. You're going to have the three, eight, and then you're gonna have the five, eight cross, and all that's gonna just lead to an inordinate amount of pain as people try to figure out why you can't get through 173, 174. I would look at that area to short. Uh, I'll clean off all my nonsense here for a moment. And that's exactly what we did today. So we just waited for it to open up, it gave us a signal, and then we put the short on, but I was hoping that I'd get all the way up to here and be able to do it, and it just didn't give me as much as I wanted, but we still made money on it, so you know it's better than a stick in the eye, and we'll go from there. I do think that there's more pain out here, and I am currently short this, just FYI. Uh, I am, and I, I don't see how you could look at that chart and be sleeping well tonight. Just not trying to throw salt on the wound, but I'm just saying, like, what about that reeks that that's going to just remotely reverse? This is a Marabuzu Black that's broken a 12-day moving uh, you know, SMA. Uh, this is your lower low, and you're down when your underlying asset is up. Uh, you know, if it smells like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's a duck. So just consider that something that I would be paying attention to. There's a lot to go over here, but I really want to hammer that home. Start looking at the bond market. I, you know, if you want to say, oh, we're, we're definitely going higher. I mean, you opened and then they bought bonds all day. So, okay. What happened to the VIX? Okay. It imploded again. So there's not really much there, right? That's the issue. There's a bunch of little names that I definitely want to go through, but I do think that it would, it would behoove us to spend a little time on just going, okay, well, what's happening with some of the internals? We don't have to go through all of them, but let's go through some of them. Okay. Here's S&P stocks above the 50-day moving average. If you take a look here, Tuesday, January 4th, at the time of recording this, you're at highs. That's not really where you want to be, guys. You don't want to be here. You actually want to start seeing this. Let's clean this off. 
because I really don't like having lines on this. You don't really want to be here. You actually want to start seeing this start to roll. And at the time of recording this, that's the data point that they're giving me, which is kind of weird. But nonetheless, that's the data point that they're giving me. So I got to go with what it is. Um, I'm just checking to make sure that they are Tuesday, but they should have come in pretty hard and they're not. You take a look at the stocks, uh, as the stocks above the 200 day moving average. And what could be doing this is rotation. So in other words, we rotated pretty heavily today, didn't we? And so that rotation could be pushing these numbers even higher as you know, stocks that were weren't above their 50 day are now staying above their 50 day and new classes are going above their 50 day. So if we were to focus on those and say, hey, well, what was up today? I, they went defensive. They went bigly with defensive. So you start taking a look at healthcare is popping, look at XLU's popping, XLP's popping. You know, they went defensive today, guys. They moved into the defensive stance. They bought energy names. So there's a lot of that going on here. And, and so you start asking yourself, is that something that we should be doing? I, I'm not really on board with that. Um, I can understand why people are leaning that way. But I think that what we really are seeing is just tax selling. But I think it's important to understand how these internals that we're talking about work, right? So you can start seeing the five days, how they collapsed and how the 20 days, how they came down. But you're not really seeing those 50 days come down. Why? Rotation, right? And you're not really seeing the 200 days come down either. Why? Rotation. Is that good or bad? I don't really view it as people say, well, the breath is getting better. This can only go so high. And, and so there's something to that that I, I would just be very cognizant of. Uh, and be paying attention to. But that said, I do think some of these sectors held up very, very well. Others got absolutely imploded. But you shouldn't be really surprised to see the tax selling. And this is exactly what we were talking about, that you were going to just see massive tax selling, especially on Megatech this week. Uh, it usually is today. So you shouldn't have been shocked by that. If you haven't been trading for a couple of years and you only traded for the past couple of years, you might not be aware of it. But this is this always happens the first five days. Whatever the big winners were, they get smoked, and the big losers they rally, right? And I did go through this in a couple of the Saturday videos, so make sure you subscribe. Also, click the all notifications button. In the all notifications button, it lets you know exactly when these videos come out. It also lets you know when the pre market live goes because sometimes it's supposed to be eight fifteen. And sometimes it's not 8.15, it's more like 8.20 or a little bit lighter. So you might, want to, you might want to do that. But we knew Microsoft was a killer. Apple's got issues. We all are aware of Apple's issues after today. Uh, they gapped it down. There really wasn't much meat on the bone to short that today or to play with it. Right? But look where you're sitting right in the 55. They better hold that. They better hold that. But Apple's got some real issues here. They've got some real antitrust stuff with the EU coming out. And this Apple Watch thing's turning into a thing. So they got to figure out what they're going to do, be here and, and how they're going to handle it. I mean, that's all I have to say about it. I don't have much more than that. You start breaking the 55 in January, that means you already lost institutional support the first week of the year. It's not great. So we definitely want to watch that. But you start looking at the big players, XLC. Did that really break down? Did we, did we really lose software? You're kind of losing the CRMs, the crowds, right? They're starting to kind of break down, aren't they? They're starting to sort of roll there. So that's something that we have to pay attention to. If we start losing the crowds, the work days, those kinds of names, right? And they're breaking the 22. So do we really want to buy stocks that break the 22 moving average? Probably not. We might want to go look for greener pastures. And there's a lot out there that's actually working. Uh, I would tell you, start looking at the XLRE names. I would tell you to be all over the biotech names. They were bought heavily today on those pullbacks. Uh, you could see that um, there are names that were, um, I'm heavily focused on, I should say it that way. Uh, but you know, you're breaking the 22. Remember, the 12 tells you really, this is how I view the world. 12 tells me, uh, do I want to be in a swing trade? Yes or no. If I'm below it, no, I don't really want to be in a swing trade. Uh, to break the 22, who's below? What, what does that represent? Okay, who's in charge? The bulls or the bears? Okay, so I don't want to do a swing trade and the bears are in charge. Okay, 55 is institutional support. I, I cannot see any reason that I would go near some of these names, right? Not, I just don't see any reason why I would. Some of these, I'm just looking at Mara again, waiting to see that that 20, I don't know how you're not getting to that $20 level, but I don't wanna to digress too much. So you start going through some of these other names and this is what happens. Now they take time to build, you're grossly overbought on these names. So you just stay out of the way. 23 was the magic number. We talked about this. You've been having trouble with 23. You could never get through it. Now you close below the 22. And, you know, that's usually an intermediate sell, sell signal to me. You got to get above that, right? You need to get above that. Socks. And we talked about this stuff on Saturday. You didn't break the 22, but I talked about this on Saturday, buying SOSX, FNGD, buying these names, you know, XU, uh, or XVU, XV, UV, XY. Boy, I need another cup of coffee. Um, 
I don't think it really would have mattered that one so much. But I, you know, there's nothing technically about these. No matter no matter what I think, I'm a technical trader. So even if I have like a good fundamental reason, I still need my trigger. And these things are just absolute dumpster fire. So it's really hard for me to get involved. But I know people in the room did it and they did exceptionally well with them today. So congratulations with them. Uh, but these were your winners. These are the things that you had to pay attention to. Again, I just want to throw it out there. If I was long some of these names today, what would be my number one concern? If I owned an underlying asset, a class with an underlying asset, and the underlying asset is going up and the miner is going down, you have a problem. Because what do you think is going to happen when the underlying asset goes down? And believe it or not, Bitcoin can go down. So this is the one thing that if you're going to take one thing away from this video, take that. Also take the rotation I just went through. There are the things that I would focus on. Now, as far as names, what worked today and what seems to be working. So LVS is something that we bought in the community today. We paid uh, right, a, right a little under 50 for it. Uh, you're breaking out here. Macau's going pretty well. You might want to look into this. Goldman had a pretty nice note on it today. Uh, there I go again with my quote, inside information. Remember, guys, research is not information. Uh, inside information, it's just called research. So if you take a look at these names, the ones that I always like are LVS, and then I also like the MLCO, and I like Win. They're the three that I play because they're the ones with the licenses, I believe. I think MGM's there, but in a management capacity. So if you'll take a look at these, they look great. Why I went with LVS is just because the 55's curling up. You can pick any one you want for any reason. But I think we're up a little over a buck on this already. So I kind of like the action on it. And I like bars like this where I open with no shadow and close with no shadow. That's actually called the Marbuzu White. That's actually the exact opposite of the nonsense that happened here. We have no shadow, right? So, you know, pick which, you know, pick your poison. I, I would say this with LABU, they tried to gap you down and they shook the tree. And we had a nice little day trade in this today. But if you take a look at that, that's all they did. It gave me a really nice day trade, real nice entry in and pushing all the way through. 125 is your demarcation line and you're back over. So, I, I wouldn't sleep on this. Now, you do have some economic data. And before I go any further, this was a non-event today. Uh, PMI was a non-event today. You're going to have mortgage rates tomorrow. That's going to affect now. You're going to want to pay attention to that. PMI can move the market. But more importantly, this jolts jobs. You have data points tomorrow, guys, that can move the market. So again, you have an S&P that's got an 18 on an RSI on a four hour. And now you're sitting here on the jolts jobs number. And this number, what we need to see with something like this is what's it going to do? Are you going to be weaker? Are you going to be too weak? Is seasonality going to kick in because they hired for the Christmas season? I have no idea. You know, you're going to have a bunch of people that tell you that they're going to know. Again, the only thing I know about this time is I'll be drinking coffee. So I want to watch this number really, really closely and see how that goes. Uh, then right after this number, you're going to want to watch that auction and the bond market. If you don't know how to read the bond auctions, look at the 10-year. Watch what the 10-year does. It'll tell you exactly what to do. Then you get back to that number, and then you're going to have the FOMC minutes where you're going to have a bunch of people talk about things that already happened in the past, and we're going to pretend that that's going to tell us what's going to happen in the future, and we all know how that goes. Nonetheless, it'll move the market. So I would watch Nail tomorrow and see how this goes, uh, but you are seeing a lot of these movements continue, right? So for example, uh, you're starting to see the buyers come in like IEP, uh, that's getting bought. You're going to want to pay attention to that the worst performing stocks of last year, okay? IEP was a dumpster fire. ENPH, dumpster fire. Liquid finished green. TAN, dumpster fire. Eh, didn't finish that green, did it? But you start just going through them. Find the ones in that space that actually finished green. See if you can find any that are in the solar space that finished green. I don't think I could say that more. I don't think I could have. So what you want, why, is because that's the one space, the one sector that's completely beaten down that benefits greatly from rates dropping. You're probably going to want to pay attention to that. That just makes sense, right? CIM is something that we're in in the community. I think we paid 10, 10 and a half for it. But down, remember Maersk came out and said, oh, by the way, we're definitely going to get our ships back in the water. And they telegraphed where they were going to be. And then their ships got attacked again. And then they were shocked that their ships got attacked after they told them when and where they were going to be. Shocking, right? And so now what you're seeing is the uh, they're getting back out of the market. And so you're going to get the secondary markets coming in where you're going to see ZIM for dry bulk. They're going to move. Then you start seeing the tankers. They're going to move, right? So you get it. Okay. So I would watch that. I like the ZIM the most because they're the most dry bulk. And they're the only ones out of Southeast Asia that have a direct connection to Baltimore. So they, they have a, a direct route that, that no one else has, that direct route. So I'd pay attention to that. And that was something I learned about a year ago when we started playing with this thing. But I definitely think that there's an edge there. So that's something that I would say if we took a look at NVIDIA, 
I might as well walk through this now. Um, we had a really nice trade in this. I'm gonna walk through this because I think it's a great learning lesson. And I might show the live trade if you guys wanna see it. Just comment below if you do. I appreciate you sharing this and I really do and I appreciate your comments. They help greatly in creating content. I had a couple people today with some really good comments. So I, I, there's things that I'm actually going to implement after talking to people and reading their comments. So even if I don't respond to your comment right away, I do read them. Uh, and then I tend to respond to all of them when I have the time. So all I want to do is show you this. We knew on Friday that this name had a high degree of probability of being sold. Why? It's one of the largest gainers of 2023. They want to take that tax gain this year. So what we do is we just watch the 350 level. 350 market on close. All your orders have to be in at 350, right? So what you're using is you're using market dynamics and past performance of how people hedge or utilize their, their tax positions. And you take that knowledge and then you make an educated guess. So that's what we did here. And I just watched and watched how they acted at 350. You can start seeing them lightening up. So once you saw that, we just put this trade on. We had another trade early in the day that day. I, I think I walked through that one. We actually bought the 495s here and crushed it. And then we just got out of them, scaled on the way down. And that's exactly what we did here, all the way down. And we just scaled out of them. And you can start to see the profits. I like showing this and I like showing the timestamps so you can actually see it. Uh, instead of me saying, look what I did, like a real view mirror. I find that kind of cheesy. It's about as cheesy as me pointing up numbers. But if you see here right now, you just see that we're at 100% of the puts. We, thank you very much. Made 100% onto the next one. Um, we went from there. And then these Mara puts were just a dumpster fire today. I lost 10 cents there and then got back in and made like a, a decent amount of money. But they just did not move the way that they were supposed to. But uh, so what you're doing here is going, okay, so what's next? Well, for us, the move is just to make sure and see how this is going to play out. So I would take what I'm going to say and I would listen to it very carefully. If I was you, I would go and see what stocks stopped dropping at 10 o'clock today. Okay? I would go and see what stocks dropped stopped dropping at 10 o'clock today. So if you put up here and we'll just use this scan and you go at NVIDIA and then you want AMD okay, and you want Micron. All right. And you want ARM just to throw a couple in just to take a look. And then let me just turn this into a line. Okay. And let's just put a couple demarcations in there, right? Like the NASDAQ and let's throw the socks in there, okay? And this is kind of how I look at my day. So now let's go take a look at this and we're gonna mark that from the, yeah, there you go, we start our day. All right, so here's the NASDAQ, here's NVIDIA outperforming, but you're gonna notice a huge thing. If you take the 10 o'clock, what happens at 10 o'clock, guys? That's where institutions start to buy. They, wa they watch retail score around for the first half hour and then they watch their levels. So if you go to that 10 o'clock level and you just start dropping right on 10 o'clock and you start seeing, so here's the socks, here's NVIDIA. Okay, so NVIDIA never came back. Here's the Qs, here's Micron. So then you would just mark Micron at the same time and go, okay, well, Micron never got above its 10 o'clock level. So what's that telling you? Okay, so you by that statement, you can surmise that around 10 o'clock today, institutions started selling what? Micron, what did they start buying? NVIDIA. All right, see how you did that? Just by understanding who moves when. You're taking movement of market dynamics and then you're making an educated guess. We'll find out this week if we're right or not. But then you just start seeing, all right, 10 o'clock, what they sell, AMD. Okay, AMD was a dumpster fire today, guys. Uh, and then we'll just pop this in here. And ARM, I'm in ARM. And uh, that was just an absolute disaster. It's really thin, but you get where I'm going with this. Hopefully one of these kids was doing their own thing. I think that was Sesame Street. It was NVIDIA. And you can see how that's acting. So that's definitely something that I'd pay attention to. I'd also pay attention to how I did that. So you can do that when there's a sector that you're really interested in. Let's get rid of these indicators. That's not the way that I wanted to do that. I think that that's pertinent. I think understanding what's going on in Macau's pertinent. I think understanding what's happening in semiconductors and how they are stronger than the cloud stocks if you didn't get what I was putting down. I also think you should be looking at the biotech names. Go through the list of names that were the worst performing stocks, Johnson & Johnson, Visor. Okay, start looking at these names, MRNA, worst performing stocks, which one of those has earnings this week, WBA, and start looking at these names, okay? Understand that the stocks that moved last year, like Tesla, you're, you could be wasting a lot of time watching these names, trying to catch Tesla and get that dollar out of Tesla. You know, I had a client a long time ago that had a statement and it was like, you know, you're, you're watching the peanuts and the elephants are running wild. It, it, the, 2024 might not be circulated upon Tesla anymore. It might ha you might have to start looking at different names and understanding what kind of cycle you're in. 